Good morning, y'all. This is Ned over at MyPhilippineDreams.com, and I am running solo once again because Michelle is at work making me money, bringing home the bacon. Uh, welcome to part two of our examination of Amor Propio and Hia, two of the themes that underlie some of the things that go on with Filipinos and Filipinas. Um, and we're trying to make an effort here to understand the Filipino psychology. We're trying to understand here, or I'm trying to understand here, mostly unsuccessfully, about how things work. Um, first off, a disclaimer. Don't for a second assume that I know what I am talking about. Um, I'm basically in the research part of this. I'm talking to Filipinos, I'm talking to Filipinas, I'm talking to foreigners. Um, I'm basing this on my own life experiences over the past year here. Um, I'm doing research online, doing a lot of reading and stuff. And again, I'm trying to figure this out. Um, basically, it comes down to one in Rome, do as the Romans do. But if you're going to do as the Romans do, you got to know why you're doing it and what you're supposed to do in certain situations. And understanding a more propio and hia is an important part, at least in my humble opinion, in understanding that. Um, I also don't want to offend anybody. Again, um, I'm trying to figure this out. I'm putting in the effort. Um, so try to respect that. If you're Pinoy or Panay, please, please don't get offended. Um, there are some generalizations that I'm making here um, when I'm looking at this, when we're examining this. Um, so don't take it the, uh, the wrong way. Everybody is an individual. Everybody is different. Everybody responds to different situations in different ways. Again, we're going to be just doing some generalizing here, which can get scary and can offend some people. Um, quick uh, review of the definitions. Amor propio um, basically means self-love. It comes from the Spanish, but the concept um, actually predates the Spanish occupation. Um, again, in Southeast Asia, you're going to experience a lot of this um, face, dignity, self-respect, um, and more propio, self-love. Um, and violations of that can bring on shame and embarrassment, hiya, loss of face, um, and that's what we're trying to avoid. Um, so the concept was there before the Spanish even got here, and they just gave a name to it, more propio and hiya. Again, he uh, is shame, embarrassment, uh, when you violate someone's amor propio or somebody violates their own amor propio by, for example, not showing hospitality, um, stuff like that, it can bring on shame, it can bring on embarrassment, and that's what we're trying to avoid. Who is affected? Everybody in the Philippines is affected by amor propio and he. Uh. Um, if you're a foreigner, if you're a Pinoy, if you're a Panay, if you're running a business here, um, if you're setting foot in the soil, just, you know, transferring at the international airport, um, this can affect you. What's interesting is a lot of younger Filipinos that I've been talking to actually don't know what the term Amor Propio is, but they know the concept. Um, and on the flip side, they know what he is. Just about every young Filipino I've talked to knows what he is. Shame, embarrassment. Um, so that's who's affected. And dealing with this stuff, um, and dealing with... Filipinos and Filipinas and having interpersonal communication and relationships and stuff, you don't want to violate someone's amor propio. You don't want to bring on shame or embarrassment to that person. So basically what you want to do is always um, give somebody a way out. Even if they're 100% in the wrong, try to give them a way out so they can preserve their dignity. When I was working, you know, I used to work in social services and human... Um, Human services, we used, we used to work with clients who were in rough shape, and we always used to remind ourselves, make sure you're handing them their dignity. And again, this isn't just the Philippines. This is stuff we should be doing all the time to everybody all around the world. If everybody did that, the world would probably be a much better place. So always give Filipinos a way out, even if they're 100% in the wrong. Um, an example I mentioned yesterday in the, in the first video, if you go shopping and you talk to a salesperson and they say, sorry, sir, out of stock, um, and then you see it right behind them on the shelf, don't get all belligerent. So, you know, don't be like, hey, jerk face, it's right there. What are you talking about? It's out of stock. Um, there's a couple things that can be going on. They might not know what the, that the item is actually in stock. Um, they might not understand our accent. The, the American accent, Aussie accent, British accent, Irish accent are all different. Um, and they just might not have understood what you said. Um, so always give them a way out. You know, if you see it, you can say, oh, wait a minute, I think, I think that might be it over there. You probably just weren't aware that it, that was in stock. You know, just be polite, be nice, make sure you maintain, you know, some communication so people can maintain their dignity. 
Um, another example is people cutting in line. If someone cuts ahead of you in line, don't be like, hey, jackass, what are you doing cutting ahead of me? Who do you think you are? What am I, a white ghost? You don't see me? Quit disrespecting me. Um, again, just, you know, politely say, excuse me, sir, excuse me, ma'am. You know, I, I probably, you know, wasn't close enough in line, but I'm actually in line. And, you know, they'll usually defer. Also, something, the cutting in line piece, it's not just foreigners like a target. We always see ourselves as a victim of these things. Um, if it's an older person, they usually feel entitled, again, because of a more proprio and showing respect to elders, to cut ahead of you in line. Um, so, again, if it's a Nate or, or, you know, a Lolo or whatever, cutting ahead of you, you know, give them that respect because they, they cut ahead of everybody. It's just part of the culture here. Um, if somebody has toilet paper on their shoes, it's another example of a more proprio. And if you point it out to them, you say, hey, dude, you got some toilet paper on your shoe. Um, they're they might feel that their more propio is violated and they might experience a sense of he, uh, uh, shame or embarrassment because of that. Um, so that's an interesting one. And uh, the funeral flowers that I got from Michelle for her birthday. Uh, when I was interacting with the salesperson and stuff, I don't think she was just after the sale. I think she was actually um, just, didn't want to, just didn't want to embarrass me by saying, but sir, these are actually funeral flowers. Um, which will brings, brings me to another topic which we'll examine in the next video, uh, quote unquote, the nice but stupid foreigner. Uh, we get that quite a bit also because we don't understand some of the things here. Uh, so those are just four quick examples of a more pro PO. Um, you know, handing people their dignity, making sure you give people a way out, um, pulling people to the side, having a private conversation, not making a public spectacle. Um, which unfortunately some people do because they just feel overwhelmed by some of these situations. Um, we're going to talk about some of the negatives uh, about Omar Propio and then we're going to talk about some of the positives. Uh, so let's get the bad news out first. Some of the negatives of Omar Propio are lack of personal responsibility um, and blame. If somebody is, again, even if they're 100% in the wrong, a lot of times they don't want to admit that because they'll feel ashamed, they'll feel embarrassed, uh, they'll feel singled out. Um, so there's a bit of a lack of that sometimes, that people don't want to take responsibility or take blame. Again, car accidents occur. Both parties get out, the foreigner is immediately overwhelmed, even if the guy rear-ended him, you know, sometimes the local will be like, you know, it's your fault, you, you know, blah, blah, blah. Again, it's, it's a, sometimes it's a lack of taking responsibility or wanting to take blame. Um, lying. Sometimes... You will be lied to. Yes, it'll occur. It occurs everywhere. It's an international phenomenon. Um, again, we talked about the Filipino. Yes, sometimes it can mean they're unsure. Sometimes they don't know and they just don't want to admit it. Um, sometimes they just don't understand our accent, our accents. So sometimes you're going to get lied to. If a, you know somebody gets caught stealing something, uh, they're going to lie. It's just the way it is. Um, but again, sometimes it's not just they don't want to go to jail or they don't want to get in trouble. A lot of times it's just they don't want to experience that embarrassment. Uh, submission to authority. Sometimes this can be a negative thing. Yes, there's the respect for elders, but sometimes other family members who are making more money can be singled out um, and sometimes exploited. Sometimes this happens to OFWs, overseas Filipino workers. They go overseas, they work for years, they're sending money back to their family. They come back and the money is gone. And they can't question that, and they can't get upset because to do that would be a violation of a more propio, because it's their duty to provide for the family, and they shouldn't be questioning authority. Um, lost debts. We joke about you know loaning money to other family members or loaning money to Filipinos. Um, sometimes those debts don't get collected because again, if you try to collect that, you might be violating that other person's sense of a more propio and bring shame onto them. Um, for, the, for singling them out and trying to make them take responsibility and bring the blame and the onus of uh, ownership of that situation onto them. Sometimes abuses occur with these loans, um, but again, it's not just foreigners that are being targeted. Wealthier Filipinos that are part of Filip extended Filipinos' families sometimes also get targeted. They're expected to shoulder the living costs of their extended clan or their ex extended family. Again, it's just part of the expectations that are placed upon um, Filipinos here as part of their society. Um, also, the last negative thing we're going to talk about, and this is just a conjecture on my part, but maybe there's some narcissism involved in this. Um, 
Manila, Makati, Makati, Makati uh, is known as the selfie capital of the entire world. More selfies are taken there than anywhere in the world. And if you've been in the Philippines, you'll know that everybody likes to take their own pictures. Uh, so that was a Time study that was done by Time magazine. And in 2006, there was another study done where m Filipino men considered themselves twice as likely to be sexually attracted to the opposite sex than other males that were polled in other uh, Southeast Asian countries. So maybe there's a little bit of uh, narcissism there. Also corruption, it can contribute to corruption because to question a politician's or somebody else's integrity and try to you know, single them out or bring you know, blame to them, um, even if they are corrupt, can be seen as bad practice, can be bad, seen as bad societal etiquette. And to question somebody else's integrity like that is a violation of your own amor propio. Because again, they're an authority figure, they're higher above you, and you're not supposed to question that. So those are some of the negative things that amor propio can result in. Now let's talk about the positives. First off, hospitality. You know, you, you hear time and time again, you know, Filipinos being stereotyped, and there's worse stereotypes in the world, of being the most hospitable people in the world. Um, again, when my Pajero broke, broke down and I was stuck on the side of the road, this, you know, this elderly Lolo, this gentleman came out, he gave me a chair, he gave me um, a soda, you know, just because, again, that's the hospitality. Um, Filipinos will often ask you, have you eaten? Um, if you visit their homes, it's like, would you like to eat? Um, they're not expecting that you'll say yes, but it's just part of a more propio to be hospitable and to extend that hospitality. Um, respect for elders, you'll see this all the time. Again, line cutting, it's just the way it is. Um, if you're a Lolo or you're a Lola, uh, you know, you just offer the line ahead of you or you offer your seat. Again, this is stuff you, that I don't see in the United States and I think it's a wonderful thing. Um, taking care of family. You know, when somebody gets to be in their 70s or 80s in the United States, they get shipped off to the nursing home a lot of times. I'm generalizing. Uh, here, the extended family takes care of them. Um, a place is made for them in other people's homes, in their sons' or their daughters' homes, and they're surrounded by the people that they love and the people that are going to take care of them, just like they took care of the kids, the sons and daughters, when they were little. Um, there's also a lot of more social co cohesion in the Philippines than I think you'll see in the West. Um, correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section. Um, people are just closer, they're tighter, the social bonds are a lot stronger. You can see that in just people walking down the street arm in arm or hand in hand. There's a lot more connection there on that level. And again, that's part of the more propio. That's not just part of loving yourself, but appreciating the family, the clan around you, um, and also extending that love to them. And finally, uh, uh, pride. The Philippines is a young country. I believe it got its independence back in 1946. Um, so that's like 69 years. It's, so the country's only 69 years old. It's trying to forge its own national identity. It's trying to develop, again, that cohesion. Basically, you got all these different islands, you got all these different languages, you got all these different you know, tribes and clans that are trying to form a cohesive hold. And Amor Propio is doing something to develop that and allow that to, to uh, flourish, again, through that collective consciousness of Amor Propio, um, developing that self-love, developing that self-respect, and creating that identity. And I think it's a wonderful thing. But again, as foreigners, we have to give thought to this. We have to try to understand how this works. If we're going to stay here um, for an extended period of time, and we're going to come to peace with ourselves and come to peace with the Philippines and stop, you know, banging our head against the wall and trying to figure out, you know, and hopelessly about what's going on here. We have to take a look at this. Um, again, a lot of times it's us. A lot of times it's us getting out of our own way, us trying to understand and come to some cognizance, realization of where we fit within the structure. So I hope that helps. Again, um, I'm trying to figure this out myself. I'm putting in the effort. I'm not trying to offend everybody. Yes, I was speaking in generalizations. Um, everybody's an individual, so don't take it to heart. Um, but there's a lot of good things that are also part of this. Put in the effort. If you have any comments, if you have any questions, if you have anything you'd like to add, please leave it in the comment section. You can go over to our website over at myphilippinedreams.com and see the write-up that I did on this. So that's a more propio, that's hiya, and next we're going to get into the quote-unquote 
nice but stupid Kano <laughs> stuff. So this is that over at My Philippine Dreams, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.